Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, the second and last talk for this session will be given by Dr. Devanjan Nandi from TIFR Mumbai. He'll tell us about asymptotic properties of geodesics, Diophantine approximation, and large intersections. Thanks for the introduction. And I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak in this workshop. So the, what, what I talk about today is asymptotic properties of geodesics so with respect to some submanifolds. Diophantine approximation. And this is joint work with Anish Ghosh. So we start with the following. Uh, so let Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So let M be a compact manifold with strictly negative Strictly negative sectional curvature and let N be a totally geodesic submanifold of M. And in this talk, we will uh, discuss two questions about the behavior of geodesics. So, the, so one of them we call spiral traps, and the other we call. Before I mention what are the problems, I'll just write the names of the people who have worked here, some of the people. So, Mokora was also mentioned in the last talk. And Dotson, Vilani, uh, Melian, this is it's the wrong order, Melian. Yersonsky, Paula. And here there are many people. It starts, so Sullivan's uh, geodesic excursion into cusps. And Kinchin's theorems. And then there is the generalization by Kleinbock, Margulis, for lattices in semi-simple Lie groups, and then Hilvelani, Herzonsky-Pola. OK, so now, what is the question? Suppose we have this manifold of uh, negative sectional curvature. So I assume here that the sectional curvature is bounded between these numbers. So and pick some x naught 
in M and some closed geodesic which is a submanifold, a totally geodesic submanifold. Okay, and some epsilon positive. So for and also fix okay, so x naught is some point. So for what uh, directions in the unit tangent sphere located around x naught, uh, there exist do there exist times going to infinity such that Okay, so also fix some Lipschitz function of the positive reals. Such that the geodesic starting at x naught in the direction B will spend a time interval uh, f of tn long in this neighborhood uh, B lambda. Asylum. So geometrically what this means is that if V is a solution to this problem for this F, then the geodesic in this direction comes here for some time Tn, it spends the time F of Tn here, it goes away and then it comes back after some time and again spends the time F of Tn plus 1 and so on infinitely many times. So it's trapped in this neighborhood infinitely many times. Here, you look at the uh, sequence of neighborhoods, uh, exponential uh, shrinking in of some by some uh, quantity. So, where f is some Lipschitz function, and so for what uh, v in the tangent sphere, there exist times going to infinity such that this shrinking target is hit by the geodesic at time t. So, so gamma v of tn. So the geodesic in the direction b starting from uh, x naught will lie in this uh, neighborhood. So these are the questions. So here the uh, neighborhood is shrinking exponentially fast and this geodesic should, uh, should catch this at time tn infinitely many times. So the main strategy as in results of this type in negative Lee curved spaces is to uh, interpret this geometric problem. as a Diophantine approximation problem. In the boundary. Uh, the visual boundary of the universal cover of the manifold. So this I have not explained what this actually means, but this is the visual boundary with the visual, visual metric. It also has a measure called the Patterson-Sullivan measure. So when M is compact, then the fundamental group pi 1 M actually acts on this with this and ergodically with respect to this measure. Okay, so it will be good, it will be easier if I give a precise meaning of what I mean by a Diophantine approximation problem in the boundary because there are some difference in the different versions used. So I will just start with this. basic setup. So gamma is discrete group 
and M is a compact metric space with a given uh, measure, uh, probability measure, Borel probability measure. I, sh I, I should call this A because this is not the this, should, this is not to be thought of as the manifold, but the boundary. And then there is a so this so gamma acts on A by homeomorphisms and minimally so gamma orbits are dense. And suppose you are given a map from gamma to the set of subsets of A. So for each G, you have a, a set in A assigned to it. And this set, this assignment comes from the geometric problem that you study. Usually, uh, this F of G is going to be a ball. This is the usual case, the typical case. But of course, we will consider more complicated f of g's because if we want to approximate, uh, if we want to study the behavior around uh, sub general submanifolds, then we need to look at uh, more complicated sets than balls. Okay, from here, uh, from here, the next step is that you compute. Uh, so you study the set uh, EF, which is the limb subset of this uh, collection. There exist infinite. So we are looking at the set of points in A, such that there are infinitely many solutions of this containment. Usually, this is a ball like some point CG, which depends on what is the problem, and some radius RG. Okay, and so when you look at the uh, question of what is the size of this limb subset, so what is the size of the set of solutions of this Durfantine problem, then there are two kinds of results. One is the uh, zero one laws. So this, so these kinds of results you have when you have that this action is ergodic. So these are statements like uh, conditions on uh, growth conditions on F, uh, or just conditions on this capital F, which corresponds to this, which comes from. So that capital F depends on what the function F is here. So one example is the classical Diophantine. So if you look at this x minus p by q uh, less than 1 by q squared problem, this is the Dirichlet question. Then you look at the uh, orbit of the orbit of infinity under PSL uh, 2z. So corresponding to g's, which correspond to the height of the rational, you would have this ball where rg is something on the boundary. So conditions on F such that EF is zero or uh, positive 
So this is the Borel Cantelli type uh, argument, of course, here. And you have that the set has full measure if you can, sh if you also have the fact that, so this happens if uh, EF is gamma invariant and the action of gamma on A is ergodic. So this is uh, one kind of results and you can also ask that instead of, so for example, in the Dirichlet problem, in the, in the Dirichlet theorem that you have, you have infinitely many solutions P by Q of this inequality. Now you can maybe change this exponent and then the, uh, the, the size of the set for which you will have infinitely many P by Q will have measure zero. So if you add some tau here, then the measure is zero. I write this as 1 plus tau or some tau positive. Then the set of solutions x have measure 0, has measure 0. But it's the theorem of Yarnik and then Besikovich. Who say that the set has a house of dimension, so the house of dimension of these x's for this tau will be 1 by 1 plus tau. So you can ask this question about uh, the finer uh, Diophantine approximation where the approximation is stronger than the <coughs> Dirichlet case. So, so we, are, we have the 0, 1 laws which are Kinchin type theorems. And then we have the houses of dimension question. So this is a different kind of way to uh, quantify the size. We, we use the house of dimension coming from the, the house of measure coming from the metric. And this you need because the measure cannot give you any information about this. You need the metric. So given f, uh, what is the size? Yes. In the zero one laws, the main idea is to use uh, to write. So in the zero one laws, the main idea is to express E F as a Lim subset of independent sets. So you just have to show that uh, the E F sets that you get there are somehow. Is it is somehow the limb subset of independent sets, and usually in these geometric problems, when you formulate it in negative curvature, it turns out that the most natural way of constructing these sets is the is independent. Okay, and then there is the Hausdorff dimension. So here, uh, the techniques that are known consist in proving some kind of uh, properties of these sets f of g. So the f of g's are either shown to form some kind of regular systems of sets or ubiquitous systems. So these are variants of each other. Uh, this is due to Baker and Schmidt. And then a uh, generalization of this is due to Melian and Pestana. And this is due to uh, Dodson. Vickers, Ryan. About this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but now let me just Motivate the geometric problem first and see what happens in the case of uh, torus. 
So we will look at some simple cases and look at these problems quickly for what is the picture if you just take the tori. So take some point in the torus and some geodesic, closed geodesic. So you have this and you take some epsilon neighborhood of lambda. And then if you just take the lift of this, so you take the universal cover, which is R2. And these geodesics can be, so I take the lifts and the lifts are, in the, for this the geodesic I choose, they are these uh, straight lines. And the epsilon neighborhood here corresponds to these thin neighborhoods of this. So recall the spiral trap problem. It's probably not the, okay, it's there. So if you have some point x naught, and if v is a solution uh, for the spiral trap with the function f, then you can, it's easy, easy to see that f of tn, that is the amount of time that the geodesic spends uh, in, the, some, in some geodesic neighborhood should be less than some constant, which is the slope of this geodesic times some times the epsilon, which is this width. So in this case, for V to have a solution, so for there, there to exist a solution V, this must be bounded. And if this is bounded, you can find some solution. So in this case, F is bounded for this problem to have solutions. You will see this is not the case in. In section when the curvature is negative. Okay, and then look at the shrinking targets. So now we look at the three torus because in the two torus you can check that this, uh, this problem is trivial. So every V is a solution. If I have uh, neighborhoods of this, uh, which are shrinking exponentially, it does not matter what is the, it does not matter what function you have here, because any geodesic will intersect this, uh, these lines infinitely many times. So whatever neighborhood, or if you just take the geodesic itself, it will still have, and the fact the it will still be true that every uh, direction is a solution. So we look at T3 and we see what happens here. So, so we will assume that for the purpose of this, that x0 is just some point on the geodesic. So if I leave this now, so this is R, this is Z2, and Z3 is in this direction, and then we look at the projection of that. So this geodesic can be lifted to these lines. So the pre image are these lines at every point on Z2. And suppose, so now you, if V is a solution to this uh, problem, to this STP problem with F, then there exist times Tn, and points p n q n which are integers and z n which is a real in one of these lifts of this geodesic such that the distance between the geodesic at time p n and the point p n q n z n is less than e to the power minus t n. Now this, if you just look at the first two coordinates, gamma v of tn can be parameterized as uh, t alpha t z naught plus beta t for some uh, alpha and beta after normalizing if needed. So what the equations that we get from here are tn minus pn is less than e to the power minus tn and uh, alpha tn minus qn is less than e to the power minus tn. Use these two and then you get alpha minus qn by pn is less than e to the power minus 
the absolute value of Pn divided by. So this is again a classical Diophantine approximation problem, and Yarnick's theorem says that the set of alphas which will satisfy this condition for infinitely many pairs P and Q n has dimension zero, because this is this grows uh, so this decays faster than all numbers of this type, all functions of this type. And here we know that if you let tau go to infinity, then this goes to zero. So the house of dimension of alphas is zero. But for a fixed alpha, you could let beta vary in an interval. So the set of directions v in the in the sphere, the tangent sphere around some point, is one. Okay, and now I. the theorems in the negative curvature case. So the first one is a zero one law that was first proved by uh, Dodson, uh, Melian, Pestana, Bellani in a paper for surfaces and then for uh, constant sectional curvature, and then there is a generalization of that by uh, Hersonsky and Paula. It says that if you take M complete uh, such that the sectional curvature is bounded strictly negative. And n, and assume that uh, the fundamental group acts on the boundary L vertically. Assume that n is a submanifold, totally geodesic submanifold. So here I'm not assuming completeness. You don't need this here. Oh, sorry, compactness which I used while stating the theorem, uh, stating the problems. The manifold such that the fundamental group acts on the universal cover of n tilde convex co-compactly. And th so given epsilon positive, some Lipschitz function, uh, And some point x naught, the set EF of directions Okay, so, yeah, so QI embedded is what we need. There exist times such that the geodesic expands this interval in the compact core. As measure zero. And only if this integral converges. So here uh, V gamma is the entropy, the growth of this the orbits.
And similarly for gamma n, which is the fundamental group of, so gamma n is here is the fundamental group of n. So here they have to construct a class of sets, a collection of sets for which this set is uh, seen as a limb subset in the boundary. So it's basically the, uh, you can think of it as the limit of this n tilde in the limit set. And then they show that it is independent and then that is the proof. And now the, there is the question of Hausdorff dimension in the final approximation case. So if you look at this, then the maximum f of t that you can have is like uh, t1 by v gamma minus v gamma n. So this is a polynomial oh, which, with, power, with exponent smaller than 1, ah, with some exponent. Here I might be missing something, but yeah. Uh, basically, what 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 you need is that this should converge. Here I might be missing some sign. But let us look at this function. So if you take this function, then this integral converges. That means the set of measures which, uh, so the set of solution uh, vectors which will solve this uh, spiral trap problem have measure zero, but we have this, uh, house, uh, this house door dimension estimate. So if E tau is the set of directions such that there exists infinitely many times for which the geodesic in this. lives in this neighborhood has dimension in the interval so v gamma plus v gamma and tau by 1 plus tau and then this is the, this is an upper bound if you know some sectional curvature lower bound, otherwise this is just V gamma if you don't know. So this has a corollary. So this can be compared with that case in the torus where actually you don't have any alphas if tau is, if f of t is increasing linearly. f of t has to be constant there. is that if you look at this uh, so this is the set for which uh, the directions in that set will spiral around some submanifold the compact part of some submanifold for some time which is almost as big as tn so some constant times tn i should call this linear so this is equal to v gamma. So this is the full measure of the uh, compact part of the tangent sphere. If you take uh, compact, if you assume that the manifold m is compact, then this is just n minus one. But if you look at the measure of this, then of course this is zero. So now we look at the shrinking targets. And here we assume that M is compact. And N is a totally geodesic submanifold. And F is 
Lipschitz. So the set EF of directions such that there exists times Tn for which uh, the geodesic in the direction B will lie in this neighborhood e to the power minus f of t as measure 0 if this integral converges and otherwise if it does not converge then the measure is 1. And here also we, we have a finer uh, dependent approxi finer approximation question. So the theorem is if you take f of t as tau t again as there. So now we are looking at neighborhoods like exponentially shrinking. Then so here let M be compact uh, in -man totally geodesic submanifold. And M has curvature so bounded. Then the set EF of direction such that there are times that gamma, so the geodesic in the direction v at time tn will be in uh, this as dimension in uh, n minus 1 plus m tau by 1 plus tau by and n minus 1 plus n plus 1 plus tau by 1. So here for the 0 1 law we need the compactness assumption but here if we don't take the compactness assumption then we can say something weaker. Uh, so we can give a lower bound which is n minus 1 plus m minus 1 tau by 1 plus tau and the upper bound is just v, uh, just n minus 1. The reason that we do not, we are not able to have a better upper bound than this is because for this problem uh, apart from the, the global behavior of the geodesics you also have to consider the local behavior of n. So this just, this just gives us enough information so, so that we can say something about n. Here note that m minus 1 is the dimension of the boundary of n tilde in m tilde in the limit set. Here? So what is the question? Oh, so this, uh, this is the lower bound that we get for the house of dimension when m is not compact. So, so for the 0, 1 law, you need to have, uh, if you want to give a 0, 1 law, then you need something, you need to, you need a more efficient covering that which we don't have there. That is a, ah, here we assume compact. Yeah, but that's a, a 
at some point, yeah. Again, so here again, they can have the same corollary. If we take the set of directions for which it will, for some tau, it will exponentially, uh, which, which it will satisfy the shrinking target problem for some tau around this uh, submanifold n, then the Hausdorff dimension is again n minus one because you let tau go to zero. If n is three and you are looking at a three manifold, then this is two. But in this case, the Hausdorff dimension is bounded by one. It's actually one. So one remark is that so when you have some regularity of this, so when you have that these are some kind of regular systems, these sets that you get. Okay, in this kind of uh, situation, the set that you actually get is some kind of. If you take, for example, n is a geodesic, then you will get a. Um, some kind of shadow of a geodesic in the boundary, and then you are looking at thin neighborhoods of this. So this corresponds to some G, uh, this f of G. And then you look at the limb subset of this, and you have to study the limb subset here to get the size. So here they are not balls, but something different. It can also be the boundary of some con uh, some submanifold and tilde. The remark is that if this are if this is a regular system or ubiquitous, then they satisfy a Hausdorff content lower bound. So EF in this case will satisfy this condition. For some oh, this is small balls or for, for some, so that the diameter is less than some thing depending on n and gamma. And so now if you take, so there is this observation of Falconer, which is called the, which we call the large intersection property. So he says that if you take a countable collection of these sets, so, so if you get, these are G delta sets of course, limb subsets of open sets. So a countable collection of G delta sets such that this kind of uh, inequality holds, such that star holds with some constant depending on i and t for all of these, for different i's and t's. then. The intersection also has a star, and where the constant there CF, which, which so the CF can be actually taken to be one. So Falconer proves this in RN, and he remarks that so RN without the so RN is just a sphere without the point. Which you can consider. So, if you're looking at diophant and approximation for uh, for geodesic ex excursions around cusps, so if you have parabolic points and if you're looking at the orbits of parabolic points, then Rn is the space. And then he remarks that uh, this holds. This property holds. In metric spaces with uh, 
some net measures which are comparable to to the house of content so these net measures in his work in his paper come from the diary decomposition of rn so if you have a very clean diary decomposition like the one that rn has where there are no overlaps between uh, sets of the same generation so if you look at the diary decomposition in rn then there are no overlaps except at the boundary and if there are overlaps then there is complete contain containment so it's very clean and here so using these you can define these net measures which have properties which use this uh, fact that there is no overlap unless con containment so there is some constant uh, it's comparable in this sense that yeah uh, so adam nicodem derivative i think so these measures are not borel yeah so if you look at the so basically what is satisfied is that if this is my net measure of dimension s and this is my hausdorff measure of dimension s then this is less than some c1 and some c2 so this is the comparability and if you want to take um, if you want to take limits then you can no because this property uses a very strongly the dyadic the part that the fact that this these are net measures so there is no overlap so falconer explicitly writes that this is important but actually if we reduce so if we weaken this condition that these are net measures we do not get uh, some of the things here but we can still get that uh, a suitably defined outer measure we'll still have uh, some kind of lower bound so instead of this content we do some other out, uh, outer measure using the hausdorff contents and then we still get so uh, if we have some rough uh, or coarse i should say i don't know so rough dyadic decomposition so now we allow overlaps we don't get net measures then and the large intersection property holds in the sense that the set ei will so the house of dimension of this will still be bounded below by the infimum of the house of dimension of the individual sets and this has the following uh, consequence in our case time okay just two minutes so you take this surface and you choose um, any countable connection of uh, closed geodesics here so any 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 you like countably many you have a collection lambda is and you solve the shrinking target problem maybe say for some tau with this parameter so it's shrinking like e to the power minus tau t these neighborhoods and you choose some point x not any point x not then this has the property that if you look at the set of directions for which there are infinitely many times such that it is a trapped okay it is a shrinking target we can also consider the spiral trap here it will be it will be trapped for some time tau t tau t n so it reaches here at time t n and it spends tau t time here and then for some other time it goes here and then it spends tau t time here and it does the same the same geodesic actually does the same thing here in this quantitative way and if you look at this set of uh, geodesics so v so if you look at the set of geodesics e i corresponding to the lambda i set and if you take the intersection 
then this is still larger than that lower bound there. So in this case, it is 1 plus k is 0. So 1 by 1 plus tau, I think. And one, uh, an arithmetic application of this is, so this you can cho cho do in any, in any dimension and you can choose any submanifolds here. You will get suitable lower bounds depending on the lower bounds for EI. And an arithmetic application of the large intersection which follows directly from the work of uh, Falconer, Sullivan, and Melian Pestana. This is an observation, so this is because of Sullivan, Falcon, and Million Pestana. Is that if you look, look at the ring of integers of these uh, number fields, square free positive, and then you have the Bianchi subgroups in PSL to C. And then you look at these sets, the E, D, I correspond to the approximation, the well approximated sets, uh, well approximated complex numbers approximated by fraction, fractions P and Q, which generate the uh, field. Then for tau positive, this will have measure zero, and measure zero sets. You cannot say about anything about the intersection, even if it is non-trivial, just like here. But you have that it is non-trivial, and that this dimension is larger than two by two plus tau. So these are there are numbers which are approx well approximated by uh, fractions coming from all of these rings. I'll stop. Here. Questions and comments? Not, let's thank the speaker once again.